Huh? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Look at these Anyway, come back here. Point that at me. At least you're just seated. Today, I will be sharing a short 2-5 session at Grand Vila. But before that, I want to recommend to all of you an amazing live show I watched a few weeks ago. That is Elf, the musical. I believe it's still running every day till the end of this month. I don't know if there are any tickets left, but the show was just amazing and filled with talent. I also need to thank Greg from Greg Goes All In because he is in the cast of this production, taking on multiple roles, and he's just awesome and kills it. If he weren't involved, I probably would not have checked the show out and would have missed out on an amazing time with my wife. So thank you, Greg, for showing me the awesomeness of theater. In honor of that, I will be sharing a few hands that I played against him in his home game. The very first hand of the night, I pick up pocket queens on the button. I have to set the stage a little here. There's kind of a running joke in Greg's games that I'm always seated to have position over Greg and I often 3-bet him when he opens. Of course, there is no discrimination in my 3-bets, but yeah, that's the dynamic we have. Greg opens to $10. I raise it to $30. This is perfect, of course, when I have an actual strong hand and it also fits into the banter that we have. Everyone else folds. It's heads up into a flop of 4 queen 8 rainbow. Greg checks to me. Awesome flop for me, hitting top set for the absolute nuts. I decide to check back. On a dry board with top set, I think it's okay to do that. I double block top pair, there are no draws. Hands I can call a bet would be 8x combos for second pair, which is not likely, calling a 3 bet preflop out of position. So, specifically for the scenario of flopping top set on a dry board, I think checking behind to let the villain catch up is okay. The turn comes the Jack of Hearts. This card now introduces some draws. Greg checks again. I bet $25, hoping he either picked up a draw or hit a jack. He calls. The river is another jack. Greg checks. I bet $30. This is a tiny bet that will likely get value from all the two pair hands on this run out because of the good price. It can also induce some bluffs if he missed a draw, and I think the value hands on this board will definitely raise. Greg decides to check raise me to $90. So now I'm just thinking what my raise sizing should be. At this point, his value hands are trip jacks earn 910 for the straight. A Jack X hand is more likely, I think, because of the preflop action. With the history I have with Greg, I think I should always polarize. There is a missed flush route there that I can rep with Ace X of Hearts. I'm hoping he's holding Ace Jack or Jack 10 suited, which would be trips and blocking the straight. I go all in. Okay, I'm all in, all in. <laughs> You actually have queens? Oh, you actually have queens. That's disgusting. That's actually disgusting. Who is it? Who is it? Aaron, Aaron, 15 11, okay? 15 4, 15 11. Okay, you do it. You're actually disgusting. You actually have queens. You actually have queens. <laughs> Bro, you might have is so strong. It's actually so strong. You actually just have queens. I don't even know what your blocks would be. Do you think I'm just memeing you? <laughs> oh my god, you actually just look weird. This is so disgusting. After tanking for a very long time, Greg does make the fold. I did tell him that either way, I would show my hand for the vlog. <laughs> yeah! That's fold, easy, that's game. easy game! Easy game, easy game! Fold, fold. Right. Hey, 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 yes! Oh, welcome, welcome. Just a casual This hand, I pick up King Jack of Spades on the button. I didn't immediately take notes after this hand, so I might be slightly off with the bet sizings. 
Anyways, Greg opens to $15. The cutoff calls, I also call. Jesse in the small blind, 3-bet squeezes to $80. Greg calls. The cutoff folds and I call. It's a 3-way into a flop of Deuce King 6 with 1 spade and 2 clubs. Jesse C-bets for $120. Greg calls. With top pair and backdoor flush draw, I'm not going anywhere yet. It's definitely not a strong enough hand to raise though. It's tough to say whether my top pair is actually in the lead at the moment. With the preflop action, ace king and king queen suited are in everyone's ranges. Pocket aces are not likely for me or Greg, but Jesse could have it. Deuces or sixes actually heavily lean towards me if anyone has it here. For Jesse to be able to see bet into two people here after the three bet preflop, I'm putting him on ace king, aces, queens, or the flush draw. I think Greg can be calling with all of those hands minus aces or queens. So right now I can still beat a narrow range of queens and a flush draw. And I do have the backdoor flush draw and the possibility of maybe bluffing off top pair later. I call. The turn is another king. Really good turn card. Now the chances of either villain holding king x combos namely ace-king or king-queen suited, are decreased. I myself am blocking those hands as well. Jesse leads out again, this time for $225. Greg just calls again. With this action and board, I think I just have to fully commit, since one of them having the flush draw is very likely, and maybe they both have it, which I would just crush here. I go all in. Jesse snap folds, and then Greg goes in the tank. David, what the fuck is wrong? What? What? What is this hand? This is ridiculous. Oh my god. It's like three, it's 300. After a decent amount of time, he does make the call, and we show the same hand to chop Jesse's money. Yeah. Alright, alright. We, we chop. We chop. You don't have the king. Oh. Wait. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Flush, 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 flush. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, Greg. Flush, 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 flush. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, come back here. Point that at me. This hand, I have pocket nines at the cutoff. Greg opens to $10. The action folds to me, and I re-raise to $30. Everyone folds except for Greg, and again we are heads up. The flop comes queen 7 8 with two diamonds. Greg checks. I see bet for $30. It's a draw heavy board, and my pair is a pretty good hand that could use some protection against over cards, and could sometimes fold out pocket 10s or jacks but a lot of the times it's good here. Greg calls. At this point, I have one diamond blocker, making it less likely for Greg to have the flush draw, so he probably has a hand that beats me at the moment. Maybe ace-queen or queen-king, and I'll need some help. I'm gonna slow down on a lot of turns here and see if I want a showdown, or need to find a good spot and run out to bluff. The turn is a 9. Greg checks again. This is an amazing card, obviously, that gives me a set. And now, this hand is relatively easy to play since I can just purely bet for value. I bet around two-thirds of pot at $80. Surprisingly, Greg check raises to $260. This is a weird spot. There's no way he has two pair here, calling the three bet preflop. For him to check raise a turn here, I only beat two value hands, pocket sevens and pocket eights. I lose to pocket queens and all 10 jack combos. Even if I just count 10 jack suited, which is four combos and three combos of pocket queens, that totals seven. That's slightly more than the six combos of pocket sevens and eights. It's actually really close. The bluffs that he has would be high equity combo draws, I decide to just call and assess. Depending on the river action, I'll still likely have to make a judgment call on a last big bet. If the river breaks with no flushes or straights, I'll likely call. The river is an offsuit 6. Greg bets 
$400. This hand, he puts me in the tank. In the end, I decide that I beat two little value hands on the turn, and even if he was bluffing with a combo draw, he would have binked it on the river because all of the combo draws would contain a 10. I let this one go. Did I get bluffed here? Let me know what you guys think. If I did, Greg would have made a great play. If you want to find out, subscribe to his channel and stay tuned because I know he will be posting his perspective of this hand in a week or two. Here I just want to show some cool chip plaques that Greg added to his home game. These are basically $100 chips, but instead of chips, they are plaques. They look and feel sturdy and great. It makes the players feel more grand, like the high rulers you see on TV. Just an upgrade for our experience here. Props to Greg for constantly making efforts to improve his home game. We now jump to my 2-5 session at Grand Vila. For the first hand, I'm in the big blind with 9-8 of diamonds. The button opens to $15. The small blind calls. For this type of hand that I would definitely play, I mix it up with either calling or raising. Calling is fine here since I close the action, but I randomize here and decide to go with the more aggressive route. I 3-bet to $75. The button can be opening wide and small blind can be defending wide as well. I don't want to make the sizing too small that could incentivize a lot of hands that dominate mine to call. But everyone folds and I take this one down. This hand, I pick up king-queen in the middle position. Under the gun limps, I decide to open to $20 to isolate. Only the button and the limper calls. It's three-way to a flop of ace-jack-3 rainbow. Under the gun checks to me. Even though it's multi-way, this is a flop that heavily favors my range, especially against a button defender and a limp call. I decide to go for one stab with a small bet of $20 anticipating to take it down if no one has an ace. The button folds, but under the gun calls. The turn is a queen. The villain checks to me again. My hand does improve to second pair to go with my gut shot straight draw, but it's likely behind. I check back. At this point, I'm just hoping that the river goes check check, and I win by showdown if the villain called the flop with the jack. The river is another three. The villain now leads out for $40. This bet really looks like it's for value. I can't imagine this player going as thin as betting a jack, which is the only value hand I beat. I think a jack is likely checking here most of the time. I decide to let it go. This hand, I pick up pocket sixes at under the gun plus one. I open to $15. It folds to the hijack who three bets to $50. Everyone folds to me, and I decide to call to set mine. It's heads up to a flop of 894 with two spades. I check. The villain C bets for $60. This board's range is better for me than the villain. I call. My pair could be in the lead now, and even if it isn't, there are a lot of turn cards that are scarier to the villain than to me, which would allow me to take the pot down with a bet or a check raise. And the turn is the Ace of Spades, not one of those cards that are good for me. I check. The villain fires again for $100, not even worried about pot controlling against the mate flush. There's one move I consider, which is check raising the rep of flush, but I don't want to do that without a spade in my hand. I check quickly to see if I have a spade, and since I don't, I just let this one go. This hand, I pick up 9-7 of clubs on the button. Under the gun opens to $15. Everyone folds to me, and I decide to cold call with a drawing hand in position. The big blind also calls. The flop comes 4-5-6 with two hearts. The big blind checks. Under the gun C bets for $20. Pretty easy call for me in position, with an open ender and the nut straight draw. Also, the flop is pretty bad for the aggressor. The big blind also calls. The turn comes an offsuit king. The big blind checks again. Under the gun bets again, this time for $65. I think for a bit. It feels like he drilled the king. It's very unlikely for him to have a set or straight in this spot, opening preflop under the gun. If we were heads up, 
I could raise here and set up a big bet bluff on the river, making it super tough for just one pair to call me down. But with another player behind me who could have trapped two streets, I just have to take the passive route. I still have a nut draw, so I call. The big blind folds. The river is a 10. Everything misses. The villain now checks. Any bluff here is just, I think, too obvious now after all the draws break out and I didn't show any strength before. It seems like the villain is in check call mode, so I just wave the white flag and check it down. The villain shows queen king and I muck my hand. This hand, I pick up jack 10 on the button. There are three limpers and I also decide to limp. The small blind calls and the big blind checks his option. It's six way to a flop of nine deuce four rainbow. Everyone checks. The turn card is an eight. Everyone checks to the hijack who bets $15. The action is on me now. I feel like this bet is too small to rep any real strength. Everyone else checked twice already. And it's not common to try to trap twice with so many people in play if they did have a good hand. So I think no one can really be that strong here. My two overcards and open ender has decent equity for a semi bluff. I decide to raise it up to $50, which I think will likely take the pot down here. And everyone folds. And now for the results of this session. I bought in for $1,800 and I cashed out for $1,469. And that is a loss of $331. I'm not sure if uh, any of you would have noticed, but for those of you who have, uh, for this month, I did slow down a little bit with posting videos, um, mainly because uh, this month has been busy for me. Um, a lot of family gatherings, uh, dinners, and family visiting. So my time uh, playing poker as well as time I could spend editing videos was just uh, cut back a lot um, uh, for this month. So I just want to say, um, I guess I, yeah, I just want to say thank you to all of you. Um, it's been three months since I started this channel and uploaded my first episode. And, uh, I, the amount of support I've gone is just far beyond anything I could have imagined. My first 10 videos, I, uh, they have over a thousand views each now. And I know for a fact, I don't know a thousand people. I don't have a thousand friends that could help me get to that number. So yeah, I just want to say thank you. Um, you guys really rock. Um, it's really good to know that, uh, there is an audience out there that enjoys my work and it's really encouraging. It makes me want to keep going and keep improving and making better videos for all of you. So, um, thank you again, Merry Christmas and happy holidays. And that is it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you look forward to the next. Thank you.